What's going on, my movie friends? This is Tommy Knocker, the movie guy, coming at you. And today, I'm continuing my 10 Things I've Always Wondered series. And the feature today is Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Yes, the weird one. This is the weird one. Not Halloween 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael wasn't in that one, and that one was just... Halloween 5 is weird. Just rewatching this, I, I forgot just how weird this one is and how weird Haddonfield is and all these characters that just shows up all of a sudden in this one it's 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 just it's it's mind-boggling it, it, it really is I don't know how you feel about Halloween 5 but we're gonna get to it 10 things I've always wondered about this movie no I didn't put this in here I gotta ask so Halloween 4 I, just a year before this 1988 came out and it made a lot of money. It was the first, you know, Halloween movie in a while. First one with Michael Myers. I saw it as a kid. The first Halloween movie I saw as a kid at the theater. I was excited. And yeah, it did pretty well. Now, I remember going into the video store a year later. And I collected magazines. I collected the Fangora and Gorazone. And I kind of kept up with the news. There wasn't internet then. I don't remember hearing about Halloween 5 then. And I walk into my video store. And lo and behold, there it is. Halloween 5 in the new release section. I don't remember this coming to the theaters. Like, if it did go to the theaters, it didn't go, it wasn't there very long. I'm telling you right now. Uh, this didn't make, I didn't look at the numbers, but I don't remember this coming to my town like it, like Halloween 4 did. I don't remember this make a lot of money like Halloween 4 did. It was just, it seemed rushed. They really rushed this. And it was just there. I don't remember even reading about it in, in Gore Zone. I, I really don't. Anyway, so here are the 10 things that I've always wondered about Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. That's another thing. I hate revenge in the title. It's like Freddy's Revenge in Part 2. Isn't every movie their revenge? Isn't every movie Michael's revenge? Really? So... Okay, so here we go, guys. Here's the first thing I've always wondered about Halloween five is this the best loomis i'm sorry is this the best version we get of samuel loomis dr loomis it's halloween five my vote is yes yes the iconic loomis is probably the first one and maybe even the second one with his lines and his demeanor and just very creepy he's, he's scarier than michael is but guys halloween five loomis is so entertaining so out there I think that's why people love Halloween 5. It's just so... Like, I keep using the word weird. It's weird. It's bizarre. It's just a bizarre entry into the series. What they did with this character... The, why not? He's probably had it at this point. You know what I mean? He's going... He's He feels like he's going through this all again with Jamie. And he's just... He's, he's crazy he's unpredictable you know he's 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 basically holding Jamie as a prisoner trying to lure Michael into her just the shit he does pulling kids acting crazy pulling out guns at children's hospitals and pageants and <laughs> then he finally lures Michael at the end and beats him with a bowl with a two by four like hacksaw Jim Duggan does this is the best loneliness version I'm sorry number two thing I've always wondered. So, as far as I'm kids, as Loomis is the best version, as far as this character goes, but is Halloween 5, do they have the most annoying characters in Halloween history here? I mean, let's go through the list. You have Tina, who redeems herself. She does, you know, but she's very annoying the way she acts. It's different. There's no other, you know, characters that kind of act the way she does, and let's be honest, she's a young girl in this, you know? Or even just adults. How many weird people do you know? I know a lot of people. I'm weird too, but like, you know, annoying people. Let's you know. But she does redeem himself redeem herself. She saves Jamie. I feel that, you know, I still feel Rachel should have got that death. You have Spitz. Spaz always spits. He's a spaz. Acts, he looks and acts like Jim Carrey. You have Mikey. Michael, yes. That annoying guy who's just a dick for no reason. Tina's boyfriend. You have B -B 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 Billy, who's a kid there that stutters. And you have Jamie, who doesn't talk throughout the first half of the movie. She's a mute. She's been through so much trauma from the first one. She doesn't speak. 
yeah, you get you get Jamie, and she gets these visions of Michael, and she has this connection with him, and mm -hmm. you have even Michael. You have crying Michael, one of the most wimpiest, annoying versions of Michael Myers there is. He cries in this one. Jamie's trying to reach the the kindness out of him. Only she can do it. Loomis knows it. Only Jamie can bring the niceness out of Michael, and he doesn't want it. He's just. You get, and you get the man in black. You got this weird hermit guy in the beginning. This old man hermit. And you can't even tell how Michael kills him. It's so confusing. The characters in this, they're just, they're just god awful. They're just god. the cops. The cops. I even mentioned the cops for some ever whatever reason they decide. Look, look how far the cops have dropped from all from Haddonfield. You know, yeah, Brackett. He's out in Florida now, retired. You have Officer Hunt, who should have took over from part two. Where'd he go? Maker's Maker. But that's what Maker's got. Is these cops with this with these clown soundtrack? The clown shoes. Next, number three. What's up with that house? Could you not just find a simple little white house? I mean, Michael, the Myers house is what very is simple. That? Build the damn thing. It's very easy. You couldn't just find a simple white house. You had to go with that. Yeah, that Tim Burton gothic looking house. I mean, that's how I'm going to go with it. Look at the house. We couldn't go with something simpler than that. Sometimes this director, though, I mean, as far as, the, the you know, this, this is going in a weird direction. And I don't hate Halloween 5. It's one of those ones you can put in and just like sit back and like, what are they doing with this? It's entertaining. It's not boring. Next thing. I've always wondered. Number four. Did the cops... So from part four, the end of part four, when Michael got shot, you know, I think they're in a graveyard. He gets shot, blown up with dynamite, whatever. They, and he goes in the, the creek, goes down there, right? Did the cops even bother looking? So he went down there. He wasn't down there very long, guys. You know, we saw the scene at the beginning of part five, you know, where he's, he's basically tubing down the down the creek. Michael, and that's another scene. I don't want to see Michael in water. I mean, he looks vulnerable. We know he's, but I don't want to see it. But anyway, the cops, did they even look? The hermit's shack wasn't that far down, and he's there for a whole year. They didn't even bother looking. I mean, even Loomis was at the end of part four was content. And then he didn't even have a body. That was very disappointing of Loomis. He didn't even have a body. And he went back to their house and he's like, he's dead. Don't worry about it. Number five. Why can't Michael just leave dogs alone? Jesus. From the first one, Lester, you know? And then the fourth one, he kills Sunday. Oh, and the first one, also that random dog in the house. Then four, he kills their dog Sunday. And now they get a, a new dog, probably from the trauma from the year before, after, with, you know, with Michael. What happens? They get a new dog named Max, and he dies. Michael kills him. Michael, leave dogs alone. I love Michael Myers, man. He kills many people as you want. I don't care. Even in the newer ones, when he kills the kids. Cool. Leave dogs alone. Number six. Talk in the damn mask. Why can't he just talk in that damn mask? I don't mind the look of the mask. People give Halloween four mask shit. It's a totally different mask. I give it a... That's why I give it... It's fine. You know? But Halloween five mask. It's evil looking, but how did it go from the four... Part four mask to that? Same movie, same scene. You know, from the end of the first one. But tuck it in. That's all I asked. Tuck it in, dude. My OCD was driving me crazy when he's there stalking Rachel and he's like going from room to room and you can see the it just doesn't look right. A weird choice. Don't the look of the mask is fine. Just tuck it in. Tuck it in. Uh next thing. Number seven. When did he get the thorn symbol exactly? When did that appear? So in the beginning of part five, was it that year he would he took a nap? He was in that coma for a year. That's what the thorn symbol just appeared. When did it didn't come from? It wasn't in part four. Just appears all of a sudden. 
they, they, they didn't really go into the thorn thing in part six i want to know why did that appear was there a certain date that has something to do with 1989 i don't know can somebody please tell me why did the thorn symbol just all of a sudden show up in the beginning of the movie he didn't have it in four he never had it in the first place number eight so this one we all know who it is but this is more of me going back from when i was a kid from 1989, watching this when I was 12 years old. And then I had to wait six years to find out who it was. Six whole years. I was like 17, 18 when I finally found out. Who was the man in black? No, not Johnny Cash. The man in black who got off a bus of all places. This doctor, we, we know later on in Halloween 6, it's Wynn. It's Dr. Wynn. Loomis' co-worker, his boss, whatever. He gets off a bus at Haddonfield. He's very, very low-key. He's very, you know, he doesn't want to drive his own car. He wants to be incognito. So when I'm watching this with my cousins and whoever, they thought it was Freddy Krueger. They, they just thought the hat. They thought he was skinny. They thought, oh my God, it's Freddy Krueger. He's helping Michael. Um, I never thought that, but I just thought it was a family member. I thought it was some kind of family member of Michael's, maybe some kind of uncle, some kind of, I don't know. It's not like Halloween 6 went in a much better direction. But yeah, who was the man in black? It drove me crazy for six years to figure out who this guy was. And no, there was nobody left for Jamie. As far as we knew, Loomis died. Tina died. Rachel died. You know, friends died. We didn't... Who was left? You know? Number nine. Number nine. So, do Michael and Jamie have a telepathic link? Do they have a connection? Because of the because did he at the end of part four when she touched his hand did something get released into her the evil, and then after that, she decided you know yeah she stabs her adopted mother but she doesn't go full evil in this one they went in a different direction. He's still after her even after she you know. But yeah, did they always have a tele like a connection? All through the movie, she can sense where he is, and that's why Loomis is nuts. And he's trying to sense it. He figured it out. He can, she can sense Michael. She knows where he is. She's basically his GPS system. And the last thing I've always wondered about Halloween Five: the revenge of Michael Myers. There's this scene right here. When Tina and Sam are walking around, they vi they're they at the children's hospital, they're visiting Jamie. They can't see or sense Michael in that scene. Right there. Come on. We see it. I remember, like, I, or me, is that, that's Michael. Is that supposed to be, like, a, how far the mighty has fallen from Michael, you know, stalking his victims from the first one, two movies, and we get this. And there's like rock and roll, rock and roll music playing in the background. Is this supposed to be scary? Is this supposed to be like, oh, look, there's Michael. Ooh, they don't see him. Oh, there he is right there. And then later on, we get a better scene when Loomis is looking for Michael. He's screaming out to him in the woods and we see Michael appear. He's like, go home, go home. And you see Michael right there. And it takes you a while in the beginning, you know, to see him. But this, it's so blatantly obvious. Do they think he's just some kind of, like, maybe groundskeeper, though? Do they think he's just a groundskeeper dressed up as Michael Myers for Halloween? For the Halloween holiday? They don't sense that. They don't see, like, well, oh, oh, Jesus. What is this guy dressed like Michael Myers? The most notorious killer in Haddonfield history. I could have done 50 things. I could have done 100 things. I've always wondered about Halloween 5. What do you think, guys? Please like and comment. What are some things you've always wondered about Halloween 5? Please let me know. Please like and comment. Stab that notification bell, guys. All right. Take it easy. See you soon.